Hi, and welcome to this video introducing the Finnish language. I'm Adam, and I'll be your teacher. Finnish is spoken natively by about 5 million people. It is one of the two official languages of Finland, and one of the 24 official languages of the European Union. It is also recognized as a minority language in Sweden, and as a national language in the Russian Republic of Karelia. A little over a hundred years ago, the spread of the Finnish language in Europe looked something like this. But during the past century, a lot has happened, and in order to accurately depict the situation of today, we first need to highlight some of these events. First of all, the little area in western Sweden ended up linguistically assimilated pretty soon. But what's interesting about it is that, unlike what you'd perhaps think, this area was not unique at all. The Finnish language has a very long history in central Sweden, which was the result of continuous internal migration stemming from the time when Finland constituted the eastern half of the Swedish realm. As you can see, only about 70 years earlier, the Finnish language was significantly wider spread in present-day Sweden. Another significant change is that the areas located in present-day Russia are no longer Finnish-speaking due to Finnish evacuations and Soviet deportations following World War II. Also, we have two somewhat large areas in northern Sweden and Norway. Although no longer a linguistic majority, these areas still speak a Finnish variety. But due to separation from the state of Finland and from the emerging Finnish standard and literary language, these areas have developed their own distinct identities and have now got their own standardized languages. In Sweden, this new language is called Mienkieli, while the one in Norway is called Kven. These two languages are, for the most part, mutually intelligible with standard Finnish and mainly differ in vocabulary. It should be noted, though, that many speakers of these two languages do consider them as still being dialects of Finnish, but I'm afraid this is a question for another video. And while the Finnish language diminished outside of Finland, politics and migration within the country led to the language spreading to areas that were formerly not Finnish-speaking. What's more, from the 40s through the 70s, large-scale migration of Finns to Sweden led to the language making a comeback in the central parts of that country. So. Today, Finnish is primarily spoken in Finland, where it is the native language of approximately 4.9 million people, or 91% of the population. It is also widely spoken as a second language by most of the remaining population. On a municipal level, Finnish is the majority language in the yellow areas on the map. In the red areas, Finnish is spoken by a minority, but still has official status. In the black areas, Finnish is also spoken by a minority, but does not have official status. In all of the red and black areas, Swedish is instead the dominant language. In Sweden, Finnish is spoken by about 200,000 people, or some 2% of the population, making it the largest language in the country after Swedish. However, the language is currently on the decrease as many members of the community are shifting to Swedish rather than passing Finnish on. On a municipal level, Finnish speakers are distributed as such, and it's clear from the map that the major concentrations are located in the central parts of the country. Also note that this map excludes the northernmost municipalities where Mienkieli is spoken, marked in darker grey. On the second map, we see the 59 municipalities where Finnish currently enjoys minority language status. Moving east to the Russian Republic of Karelia, here, Finnish is only spoken by about 8,000 people and has actually never been a major language at all. But the Karelian language, which is native to Karelia, is a close relative of Finnish, and since Karelian didn't have a standardized language, standard Finnish was promoted as a solution to this. These policies were in effect from 1917 to 1937, and once again from 1940 to 1944. After that, Finnish has had a marginal role in Karelian public life, and the amount of speakers is declining rapidly. Nevertheless, the language still enjoys a special status, and is used by a handful of local schools and newspapers. The Finnish alphabet consists of the basic Latin alphabet, with three additional letters, shown here in red. This alphabet is actually the same as the Swedish alphabet, which shows just how significant this language has been for the Finnish language and culture. In fact, the letters B, C, F, Q, W, X, Z and the so-called Swedish O are not used aside from in names, loanwords and recent slang. In addition to this standard alphabet, Finnish sometimes makes use of these two letters in foreign words. However, their use is quite limited, generally they only appear in formal texts, and the fact that they're actually not available on a standard Finnish keyboard layout should be quite telling. Relationship-wise, Finnish belongs to the Finnic branch of the Uralic language family. 
This makes it a sister language of above all Karelian and Estonian, and a more distant relative of languages such as Sami, Mordvin, Udmurt, Komi, Hungarian, Nenets, and many more. To illustrate these relationships, here are the numbers 1 to 6 in Finnish, followed first by Karelian, which is its closest relative, and then by Estonian, another Finnic language. Finally, we'll compare to North Sami, which is not a Finnic, but a Sami language, making the languages cousins. Since Finnish is a Uralic language, it is not related to the Indo-European family, where most other languages of Europe belong. But since Finnish has been in contact with speakers of Indo-European languages for a long time, the language has borrowed quite a lot of words and grammatical constructions from these languages, in particular from the Germanic ones, where English also belongs. In some cases, Finnish has actually preserved words better than the Germanic languages themselves, as in kuningas and hunaya, meaning king and honey. In other words, however, the words have changed so much that they're hardly recognizable as loans at all anymore, as in pelto and lita, meaning field and to glide. When it comes to pronunciation, a striking feature of Finnish is how almost every sound can be either long or short in any position in a word. Length is marked by simply doubling the relevant letter, as we can see in the pairs tuli, tuli, kyllä, kyllä, tila, tila, kuula, kuula. Another important feature of Finnish pronunciation is the concept of vowel harmony. Finnish has eight vowels, and we can divide them up in three groups, front, back, and neutral. Vowel harmony means that front and back vowels will never appear in the same word, which is evident looking at words like pöytä, sänky, talo, and lattia. This is important, as many grammatical endings have two forms depending on this harmony. For example, to drink is juoda, while to eat is syöda. As you can see, the vowel of the infinitive ending is different because the two words belong to different groups. Grammatically, Finnish has no gender and no articles. This means that the word han means both he and she, and the word koira can mean either a dog or the dog. What Finnish does have, however, is case. To be precise, Finnish has no less than 15 noun cases, which has given the language quite a reputation. Here we have the word talo, meaning house, declined in all of them. But while this might appear daunting at first sight, most of the cases actually correspond to prepositions in English. For example, talossa simply means in the house, talon means into the house, and talotta means without a house. In the verbal system, Finnish is unusual in having a negative verb, which it uses instead of a word meaning not. It's actually quite similar to English, where the negative form of I speak is I don't speak, rather than the nowadays less common I speak not. In Finnish, I speak is puhun, and I don't speak is en puhu. Likewise, you speak is puhut, and you don't speak is et puhu. As you can tell from the endings, the negative verb a takes the same personal endings as the regular verb puhua. Finally, to give you an idea about what Finnish looks and sounds like, I'm going to show you a short passage from the novel The Year of the Hair by Arto Pasilinna, read by native speaker Matias Järvilehto. The original title of the novel is Jänniksen Vuosi, and it's considered a classic of modern Finnish literature, having been translated into more than 20 languages. Jänis mieltyi Salojärven oloihin. Se seurasi Hannikaista ja Vatasta järviretkille, tuli rohkeasti ruuheenkin mukaan, vaikka selvästi näki, että se pelkäsi vettä. Se kasvoi pituutta, lihoi ja voimistui. Hannikainen piti pitkiä esitelmiä presidentti Kekkosesta. Janis katsoi miehiä pääkallellaan, ruuhen pohjalta, sen papanoita tipahteli kalojen sekaan. Näin päivät kuluivat Salojärvellä, eikä kenelläkään ollut aikeita lähteä muualle. And here, this introduction to the Finnish language is over. Stay tuned for more videos about Finnish and for introductions to other languages. Thank you for watching.